Not only is this an explanation of the thermosiphon system in an automotive engine, this can also serve as a very, very basic introduction to the cooling system in an automotive engine because there's not a whole lot to this. This is as basic as you can make a cooling system in an automotive engine as long as you aren't going with air cooled because that's just counting on air to go by it and move heat away from the engine. Beyond that, all this does is add liquid to the equation. So what we have here is a super detailed engine with the pistons inside of it. And as these pistons move up and down, there is air coming in, there's fuel coming in, combustion, heat is generated. Some of that's going to go out the exhaust, but some of it's going to build up in this engine block and we need to get rid of that somehow. Since we're not counting on air to blow by this engine block and cool it down, we're going to fill it up with a liquid. We're going to use coolant, and just fill a bunch of passageways inside of this engine so that no matter where you are in the engine, there's a little bit of coolant, at least a little bit of coolant somewhere that can move heat away from the source of heat or whatever's next to the source of heat. One fundamental thing about temperature is that heat rises. So whatever is heated up inside this area, the liquid is going to rise up to the top. Any of this liquid that isn't as hot is going to sink to the bottom. In reality, it doesn't work that way. And even if you wanted it to, these passageways are really small, so it's not gonna be very effective to get the cold stuff to go down that way and the hot stuff to go past it in that same narrow passageway. Luckily, we have more of the system we can utilize and that is going to go up through this water outlet here and to the radiator. All right, we're at the top of the system right here and we can only go down. More happened than just liquid going up here and I'll explain more later, but essentially we've got a heat level here that all the hottest stuff is gonna be here. It's gonna be even hotter up here, kind of, but also about here, there's gonna be hot coolant as well. So it's flowing up here and kind of coming down here because there's more heat coming up here, kind of pushing everything down. This right here is the radiator. This is out in front of the car. Air flows through the front, cool air, and then it passes by the radiator. The radiator gives up its heat, passes it onto the air, so the air is warmer on this side. The air goes elsewhere. That could be under the car, out a vent in the hood, out the side, out the wheel well. It can go anywhere, but that's not the thing we're gonna focus on. It's just cool air comes in, takes the heat away, and the heat goes elsewhere. The heat came from that coolant, so now the coolant is cooling down and it's going to sink. Now it's at the bottom, but this is gonna to continue to move because this is still generating heat. Combustion is still happening, friction is still occurring, so heat is still being generated and it's pushing itself up here. And that because of that, all of this is getting pushed down and this cool stuff here can't stay here for long, so it has to go this way. And by then, it's back in circulation in here. So just by using the properties of heat, we made a system that wants to circulate itself. There was no water pump in here pushing the fluid along this path. It just does this on its own. Obviously, since we're using water pumps in pretty much everything now, this is not a very effective system. This had a lot of design limitations, which made a lot of classic cars look the way they do. In order to get the most out of heat rising, you need a path for the heat to rise. This is kind of going upward, but in a lot of classic cars, this would go even higher. This port on the low end would be pretty much in line with the bottom of the radiator, and this hose up here would go really up high to the top of a really tall radiator so that there'd be a lot of surface area to effectively cool the fluid that's inside of the radiator. They were really big and that would be the design of the front of the car. The front of a lot of classic cars isn't even a grill, it's just a radiator out front. Sometimes even the hood ornament was a radiator cap. Some of those radiator caps even had temperature gauges on the top of them, so you'd look down the front of your hood all the way to the front of your car, and that would be your temperature gauge all the way out there, not on your dashboard. Radiators back then were narrow and tall to get the most out of this effect. Most modern radiators are short and wide so that the hood can slope downward for an aerodynamic advantage, and because there isn't a whole lot of thermosiphon action that can occur in that kind of radiator, you have to have a water pump in the system to move the coolant around effectively. So what kind of fluid do you want to use to cool this thermosiphon system? A lot of people in warmer climates like to use just pure water in their cooling system, and 
that can be all right, but you have to use the right kind of water in that situation. Even if you think your car has been rebuilt and has got the most pristine cooling system and you found the most pure source of water available, you still want to use coolant. Coolant has anti-corrosion properties that are going to help maintain your cooling system. This thermosiphon system doesn't have a water pump. Even though you don't need that water pump lubricant that's in the coolant, the anti-corrosive properties in that coolant is going to be much more friendly to the metal components in the system. The engine block, that could be iron or aluminum, and the radiator, that could be, normally it's aluminum, but there's even brass and copper radiators out there. You're going to want that coolant in there for maintaining those parts. So now that we know not to use just water, what kind of coolant do you want to use in a classic car system like this? Your normal run-of-the-mill ethylene glycol coolant is going to be a good overall choice for cars like that, but you definitely want to check the forums to see if there's any better coolant you can run in your car, any incompatible coolants you want to be aware of, and check any kind of aftermarket parts you buy for the system, especially for like a radiator, and see if they have any recommendations for the type of coolant to be running in your system. While ethylene glycol coolants tend to be that bright green color that most people think of when they think of coolant, there are other types and colors of coolants out there that are ethylene glycol based. Their chemistry has been modified a little to be more compatible with modern engines. Things like plastic parts have made their way into cooling systems and they need to be compatible with that. You probably won't have to deal with that much on a classic car that you haven't modified much, but you do want to consider that if you've added some sort of plastic part, made it more modern, or you may want to consider an alternate coolant for its longer lifespan. The basic ethylene glycol coolants of today, even the green ones, last longer than their counterparts from decades ago, but you still have to flush it out every now and then. Another option you can consider is a coolant additive like one of these. This one, for example, says one ounce or three to four capfuls per quart or one bottle per automotive cooling system of 12 to 20 quarts. There are formulas on here where you just have water in the system and then you add this for your anti-corrosion properties. It says less than 50% antifreeze provides further improvement in temperature reduction, but at least 15% antifreeze should be used in street vehicles. That street use is important to note because stuff like this is sometimes used in race cars where they're going to be raced on a track that doesn't allow ethylene glycol coolant to be used because if you get in a crash, they don't want that stuff getting all over the track. This diesel formula by a different brand has similar instructions on the back. So if you've made it to this video and this far in the video, you're probably working on a cool project car. Let me know what you're working on in the comments below, and if you want to learn more about cars, consider subscribing to the channel. I produce automotive content on a regular basis, and either way, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next Car Simplified video. Beyond that, all this does is add coolant. Beyond that, all this does is add... Beyond that, all this does is add liquid to the equation. Another option you can, another option you consider is a coolant additive like these. Another option you can, another option you can consider is a coolant additive like these.